people are great at keeping secrets, especially when they're secrets like murder. I just stood on the corner and I screamed to the top of my lungs. No parent should ever bury their child. This killer is still out there. He's a murderer. He's walking around Denver just as though he haven't done anything. The cold case unit is responsible for investigating unsolved homicides that occurred in Denver. In general, cold cases are defined as a case that's unsolved for a year or longer. Sometimes a fresh set of eyes can see something that has been there all along or see something in a different light and gives us another angle to potentially investigate that case. This concerns Denver Police case number 2002-18178. The cold case homicide that happened on April 20th of 2002 and the victim being a Rodney Tate. Rodney was shot several times. He was pronounced deceased on scene. Rodney was a big guy. He was tall like he had his daddy's height. He was 6'3", uh, 265 pounds and I always call him my teddy bear. You know how you have your sibling rivalries. We fought, we, we fight, and he'd follow me. Like, stop following me. We just got into a fight, but, you know, we still had fun. Little Rodney was, he was very, he was very generous. He wasn't no fighter or nothing. He was a, you know, a very giving guy, you know. He was just growing up. Just, just growing, growing up, up that's all. Just growing up, just growing up in the neighborhood. <laughs> On April 20th, 2002, just prior to 6.20 at night, Rodney Tate was a passenger in a Chevy Blazer driving eastbound here on MLK. At approximately Niagara, the suspect vehicle pulls up alongside the victim's car and begins firing shots into the victim's car. The shooting continues as the victim's car is going eastbound. The victim's car takes a, a left turn in between this tree and the evergreen, cutting northbound. It's gonna cut across MLK to the second house here on the left. This is where the first 911 call comes in of the shooting and where responding officers and paramedics find the victim deceased in the car and the other victim of the shooting. He had just left my house on that particular day. I was like, hey, see you, see you later, nephew, you know, and you're just another typical, you know, uh, goodbyes, you know. At 5.30, I got a call and uh, she told me Rodney's been shot. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, well, it, it can't be. He, he just pulled out my alley. I don't even think I put shoes on. We were out of there so fast. When I got there and I, I saw the yellow tape, I knew when I saw the yellow tape, someone's life had been taken. And I was hoping that it wasn't Rodney's life. And um, as it continued on throughout the night, come to find out that it was Rodney's life that had gotten taken. That was, that was, that was, he was still sitting in the truck. When I got there, when I went to go up to the truck, they wouldn't let me go up to the truck, so. So that was the day his life was taken. Further investigation led detectives to understand that there was a altercation approximately 15 minutes to 30 minutes prior to the shooting at 34th and Colorado. Uh, two groups, the victim's vehicle and the suspect's vehicle, were involved in an altercation at the McDonald's. There was a uh, verbal altercation, there was no uh, description of any weapons displayed or a physical altercation of any sort. You're here, one minute next to me, you're gone. So uh, I would say to anyone that knows anything about Rodney Tate's murder to please come forward, say something, because you never know when it could happen to your family. 
you know, nothing's gonna bring him back. But you know, somebody needs to pay for it. There are people out there on this case in Rodney Tate's murder who have seen, who have heard things that have not come forward. I plead with the communities that are affected by this violence, if you have information, please come forward. Please call Crime Stoppers. I don't ever want to forget, not ever, as long as I live. There are approximately 700 to 1,000 unsolved homicides dating back to the 60s, 70s. Those cases are investigated based on tips, case reviews. We get lots of phone calls, and that kind of generates some of our investigative efforts. Lab results, changing science. Um, the crime lab can now do things with evidence they certainly couldn't do 40 years ago, and maybe not even 15 years ago or 10 years ago. Denver Police Department case number 2009-315510, which is the cold case homicide investigation of Ivory Mefford, which occurred on May 30th, 2009. Ivory had a gentle heart. He loved basketball. Yeah, he was just a sweet, sweet man. On May 30th, 2009, at approximately 5.30 a.m., Denver Police Department received a 911 call about a man on the ground in the 1600 block of East 31st Avenue. Officers responded to the area and found a man who was later identified as Ivory Mefford. This is the 1600 block of East 31st Avenue. This is where Ivory was found between the bus bench and the grass right in this area. Officers noted that he had an apparent gunshot wound to his upper body. Paramedics responded to the scene and Mr. Mefford was pronounced dead on the scene. I'm here today to seek justice for him. On May 30th, he was murdered here at this bus stop. This violence needs to stop. No mother, no parent should ever bury their child. He was my only child. I'll never have another one again. The information we have that he was in the downtown area earlier that night, so we can account for him up until about 2 a.m. From 2 a.m. until about 5.30, we're not sure of his whereabouts, and that's one of the things we're trying to find out. Please, I know people know what's out there. They need to come forward and do the right thing. They know where he was at between 2 a.m. and 5 o'clock a.m on May 30th. You're not his friends. If you can't come forward, you're just as guilty as the person who shot the bullet. We don't have a lot to share on this case. Unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of evidence on this case. What we have is Ivory Mefford's body in the 1600 block of East 31st Avenue. Um, what's important on these cold cases is someone has just one piece of information that they feel is not important, which could be very important to us. It could break a case wide open. So anyone with, with any information on Ivory's whereabouts that night, who he was with, where he was going, uh, where he had been, that, that's extremely important to us. So if you have any information, please contact Crime Stoppers and, and pass that information on. All of you quit the violence. Stop it now. Stop killing each other. We know that in a large majority of these cases, people know stuff. They know things they have not told us. They know things that can potentially bring these cases to resolution. That's the key. If people will give us that information, then we can resolve some of these cases. My mother's name is Catherine Joy Allen. I was a senior graduating when she came up missing, so the last time I saw her was the 25th of May. She said the next time she would see me would be on June 3rd at my graduation, and she never showed up. My mom went missing when I was about two years old, and we don't know what happened to her. 
I don't have just a straight story to tell about my mom because I don't remember anything about her. She was living in the Awani Motel off of East Colfax in Denver, and um, she was going through a lot of complicated issues at the time, and she was just trying to get stable before she came up missing. It was not uncommon for my mother to not call us every single day. The last time she called was on June 2nd when I was out partying before my graduation the next day, and she told my uncle that someone was after her because they had stole some drugs, and if someone wasn't there to help her, that she would not be there the next day, and she never showed up at my graduation. Me and my sister were taken from my mom when I was 12. My mom was going through a rough patch. I do remember she was on drugs really bad. Um, she was an alcoholic. I would say it was in the 80s where she was introduced to crack cocaine. And so she was juggling those two. I was born to crack cocaine and heroin addicted. At birth, and they took me away from my mom and put me in a foster home. And I was last, I was the last one with my mom. And I never, ever got to smell her hair. I don't remember anything when it comes to my mom. I honestly think somebody may have murdered her. I know that my mom definitely was murdered. I really do believe she's murdered. And nobody wants to say anything. But I know that someone knows that my mother is dead and I know they know where she is. I believe people are, keeping, are great at keeping secrets, especially when they're secrets like murder. But I know that my mother is dead. I know that she came up missing at the Awani Motel. I know that, that, was, that there were quite a few people that saw my mother come out of that hotel. Whoever did anything to my mom, just please. Please give me closure. That's all I want. If you know anything, if you could just please call Crime Stoppers. You can remain anonymous. You don't have to tell them who you are. Any information will help. Somebody knows something. And I want to know what happened. <laughs> She's out there. She's out there. I just want my mom. There are victims in our community who suffered these losses that can never, never be fixed. These are people's lives. And, and to me, it doesn't matter if they were murdered in 1970 or murdered in 2010. They've been taken by an act of violence by a criminal act and somebody should be held accountable. At the very least, the family has a right to know what happened to their loved one. This is Denver Police Department case number 2008-158-995, the murder investigation of Charles Rhodes, which occurred on March the 12th, 2008, at 1329 Valencia Street. Charles was shot twice, and he was pronounced dead at the scene. <laughs> so my son, he was my son, and this killer is still out there. Murderer. He's walking around Denver just as though he haven't done anything. On March 12, 2008, at approximately 3 a.m., the Denver Police Department received a 911 call about a person being shot in the 1300 block of Valencia Street. We believe that Charles was walking in the neighborhood. We believe that he had just left a 7 Eleven store uh, not far from where he was found. He got into an altercation with the suspects. This is where we believe the altercation first started. We believe the suspects were in a vehicle and Charles was on foot and he continued on foot northbound on Valencia Street. We believe Charles ran from the intersection to this residence here at 1329. We believe he attempted to make contact with the residence. He was unable to and he was shot as he came off the stairs. I knew that day, that knock at the door, knew. I was on the phone with my mother at lunchtime when a Denver police officer and an advocate from the victim's advocate came. It's just a voice. Your son is gone. Your son is gone. Why she was on the phone with me, she said, Sheila, they found Charles dead. This is something that no mother ever wants to hear. He knew Charles was unarmed, but he hated him that much. 
he wanted to take his life. And that's what he did. And I'll never forgive him. Left him out there on that filthy ground. Then once you knew you had killed him, and then you keep on putting bullets in him. I want justice every day. Whatever justice smell like, I want that. It's been eight years. But of course it feels like it's been eight minutes. That's how it's been for us. This is a hell that my mother and all of us have to live every birthday, every holiday, every day. I think a lot of people know a whole lot. They heard the screams and the gun fire. <laughs> he cried for his life. <laughs> believe that someone out there knows what happened to Charles. This was well publicized when it happened. We had a billboard up on East Colfax asking for information. We didn't get any calls. We need a tip. We need someone out there to contact Crime Stoppers. One phone call could break a case. This is a killer. This is a cold-blooded one. And knowing all these years that I've suffered, I want them to pay. The families and survivors that are left when somebody dies due to a violent act or crime, I can only imagine how difficult it is when those cases remain unsolved. And so I think it's important for our community and for the families that are left behind that they know that the cold case unit in the Denver Police Department exists and that they know we work on these cases all the time. The Denver Police Department will never forget what happened to your loved one and will continually make efforts to try to bring some resolution to that case.